All right, ESPN's Bill Barnwell, I think his name was, said the Lions had one of the worst off seasons uh, in the league. Only ranks three teams lower than their off season, and he broke it down and explained it. And I agree with him. You know, a lot of people are gonna be mad. I agree with a lot of shit that he said. But hey, let's get into it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And like I said before, I'm not your fanatic fan page. I'm not going to say, we going to win, we going to win, if I don't think we going to win. I like being right too much, right? But, uh, yeah, he basically said he didn't really like a lot of the acquisitions that they brought in with uh from the Patriots. And I feel the same way, you know what I'm saying? Uh, You know, he, he pointed out that I like the Jamie Collins signing, but he pointed out that Jamie Collins had been a mess outside of New England. You know, when he went to Cleveland, he was a mess, you know, and he said that Bob Patricia, Matt, uh, Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia made a point to get the, the players that Bill Pelichick don't want no more. Danny Sheldon is another guy that they got, you know, uh, Harmon, you know, been a few other guys that have picked up that, you know, went to New England. And like I said, I'm tired of the same New England, you know, players, you know, people, you know, in Detroit are, is excited about the offseason off season that they had. Only part I really like was a draft. The free agency was was a mess. You know what I'm saying? Truly, truly a mess. Uh, Danny Sheldon is is not a guy that's going to change life. You, maybe he could be a space eater and he could stop the run, but if they try and play Danny Sheldon at the three technique, you might as well throw the whole defensive tackle away. I mean, uh, you know, they brought in Jimmy Collins, he pointed out. Uh, hopefully, Patricia can provide some structure for him, but they pay him a lot of money. You know, when he hadn't, getting, he hadn't got paid a lot of money in New England, uh, Herman, I just think of him as a special teams player, but if he can come in and produce, it is what it is. But he pointed out that they made the same mistake they made with Rick Wagner, giving Big V a big contract. Big V and Desmond Trufant was two of the ter uh, terrible signings, in my opinion. And people come back and say I was wrong, I was right. Just what I, I heard about Big V, inability, the, the, his inability to stop top pass rushers in the NFC East, you know, he was, they just, you know, basically said that he wasn't that good. You know, and if he can provide something in the run game, you know, run blocking, that's fine. But I didn't like that signing. If you're going to pay that type of money, you should have got Jack Conklin. You feel what I'm saying? I just didn't like the signing. And, you know, people can be mad at me. Dude ain't that good. I'm telling you. You know, it just seemed like they did Rick Wagner all over again. That's another thing that Barnwell said. I've been thinking that myself. Uh, there's some true font is garbage. I don't care what pro football folks say. Ask anybody in Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta where the play is play and they ride on them things like every day. He garbage. <laughs> ask Jermaine Dupree. Ask Ludacris. Ask any local Falcon fans. I got a lot of people down there in Atlanta. Garbage. You know what I'm saying? It was too many other cheaper options out there to bring true font in. They could have waited. They could have bought Drake and Patrick in. They could have kept, uh, the kid they had last year. I forget his name. Uh, um, Rashad Melvin, they could have kept him. That would to me, that's a downgrade from True Font to Melvin. They could have kept Rashad Melvin. He went to Jacksonville. Kurt Patrick was out there. Darquez Denard, you could have got for cheaper and probably could have got the same production that you got. Logan Ryan, you could have got him. You know what I'm saying? Even though he more, I think he played more than nickel. But I didn't like the True Font move. I didn't like the True Font move. I didn't like uh the Big V move. I didn't, I really didn't care about the Harmon move. That that moves me none at all. Uh, I didn't like bringing back Danny Amendola. I felt that, you know, he had his time here. Uh, Danny Shelton, I, I understood that move, but he can't be your primary. He can't be, a, he ain't a three-down three defensive tackle. You know, and he also pointed out that they were standing across the defensive line. I mean, same shit last year. They brought in Mike Daniels to say today, and he didn't get PT, got injured. You know, that I mean, this year you're looking at they're hoping that was Antonio Bryan cool from Clemson come in. I wouldn't put no stock in that guy. Um, come off of pectoral muscle. I don't, I, I just don't put no stock in, in him. I would put stock if this was Jim source and Jim Caldwell regime. We stayed with good pass rushers, George Johnson, uh, uh, Andre Fluellen, you know, sh you know, Sean Rogers court, even before them, we stayed with really, really good pass rushers in developing them under Matt Patricia. They don't really develop pass rushers like that no more. Um, so Danny, you know, they, you know, Danny Shelton, Trey Flowers, Deshaun Hand, who always injured, uh, and whoever else who's going to be on that defensive line, and Brian Kidd and, or, or Cora can put his hand in the dirt. Collins can put his hand in the dirt a little bit. I just don't, like I said, I still think they still, they still thin there. 
The linebacker core, he didn't really go into that, so I'm not going to speak on that. He talked about Collins a little bit. But uh, what else did he speak on? Uh, he said they should bring in uh, Jadavion Clowney or uh, Marcel Darius, or it was another guy he also said they should consider bringing in. Uh, Jabal Sheard, he was another guy that was in New England, played in Cleveland as well. But uh, he talked about their draft. He said, you know, he wouldn't have took, you know, DeAndre Swift in the second round because they took Carrion in the second round. Uh, I disagree there. I feel that if you had a first-round grade, that boy had an A grade on him, 91. You get him in the second round. They should have took them. He said that they didn't do a good job using their sec- first, their third overall pick trading down. And, and I, I agree, man. I didn't really care for this offseason. The draft was pretty good. I like what they done in the draft. But as far as the free agency need, I didn't like. I, I, I didn't love no move they did. Only move I thought was pretty good was bringing in Jamie Collins. But for that number they gave him was way too high. That was high like giraffe pussy. So. I, I agree with with, uh, with Barnwell, man. I didn't like that offseason they had. People just being optimistic about what they done. I didn't like what they did at right tackle. I don't like that they going to possibly start two rookies in the interior. I still don't like Taylor Decker at left tackle. Um, like I said, the D line still thin. I don't like Desmond Trufant. I still has my my I still have my reservations about uh, Justin Coleman in the slot. You know, we don't know if Tracy Walker going to be that guy or not. I, I think he will. You don't know what Tavai going to do. You don't know what Hawkinson going to do. And some people saying that this is the Stafford's most talented team that he had around him. And I'm looking like fucking where? You know what I'm saying? Because the defense, the offensive line is the first thing you got to judge Stafford on this year about having because, you know, he got a back injury. In the year Dominic Raiola and them, you know, he had his Pro Bowl season and Reggie and Joyke Bill won. I think that was the best. I think that was the best offense that he had. Offensively, that's the best year that he had. The first eight games of the season, they was able to run the ball, and Stafford had a tremendous amount of success, you know, throwing the football. I think that's the best offensive team he had around him. The best defense he had was when the year he had Joe Lombardi, and they lost to the Dallas Cowboys. But you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is, and then we talk about this later. I might go live later. I'm not sure if this is the best team that he had around him on paper. If you can't block, you know, the Lions, you know, are going. If they don't bring in Larry Warford, they're going to start two rookies possibly in the interior let that situate the fastest way to the quarterback is through the middle they're going to be growing pains there eventually down the line you know jonah jackson and stenberg who just signed his contract they're going to be good players probably hopefully if the lines can develop them but then again you got questions at right guard left guard and right tackle we don't know if big v gonna be good he ain't he wasn't good in philadelphia so you got three question marks around your offensive line that you failed to answer in the offseason with solid answers. I felt that they should have moved back and took back 10 Batard, Macari, wherever he is from Louisville, start him at right tackle, next year kick him at left, bring a right tackle in. I feel they should bring in Larry Warford right now. Then you cool. If you do that, you get a future left, ta- left tackle at right, you bring in Larry Ward for that guard. You start Jonah Jackson or Stenberg, whoever you would have drafted, at left guard. You know what I'm saying? Then, then you say you don't have to pay Big V that money. You can take that money and do something else with it. Even if you want to bring in Jack Conklin, you could still bring in Jack Conklin and the kid from Louisville that went to the Jets. You know, you can prep him behind Conklin or behind Taylor Decker. Or you can just get rid of, you know, get rid of Dale Decker altogether and play that dude at left tackle and just make him a backup to his contract run out next year. So I agree with, with Barnwell. I didn't like what they did this offseason in free agency at all. And I still think there's a, there's a lot of question marks across this team, man. A lot of people going to get mad for me saying this, but the interior with the linemen, the right tackle with question mark, um, the defensive line is a question mark still. It's still thin across the line. Uh the linebacker core, you know, I have my questions about if Collins come in and he able to do what he did in, in, in New England, I'm cool with it. Tavai can step up and do what he did. That's pretty good, but it's a lot of ifs they got to go right. It's a lot of things they got to shake. A lot of first and second year players got to step in and do well. If, excuse me, if I'm cool to disappoint, it's going to be it's gonna be crazy. But he, I don't think he will. But he may with that defensive line in front of him. So you're looking at a, a situation where, just caught out. Just count out the question marks and everything that gotta go right. Before people say, "Oh, you a hater? You didn't." Don't really care what you think, right? You watching me. You care what I think. But 
Walker got to take a step next year, which I believe he will. He's a good player. Whoever started next to Walker, uh, Harris or Herman, that's a question mark. Okuda's a rookie. He's a question mark. So you don't know what you're going to get from a rookie. Desmond Trufant, he a question mark to me. He ain't that good. So your middle linebacker, you hoping Tavaya Davis able to turn the corner. All right, that's a question mark. How Collins going to perform outside of New England? That's a question mark. Your defensive line is very, very thin. That's a question mark. You counting on Hawkinson to come in and take the step from one year to year two, year one to year two. That's a question mark. Big V question mark. The interior line, Wiggins, Dow, the kid from Wisconsin, the two rookies that you drafted, who going to win those positions? That's a question mark. Matthew Stafford's back, question mark. The backfield, question mark. You got a punter coming in, question mark. So you talking about you got at least 12 question marks that that and then you got to worry about health overall. So you got you got 12 positional question marks that you got to worry about. And also your question mark is can Daryl Bevel get the run game going? And can he can he implement a game plans that that get Jesse James and Hawkinson involved? So I I wasn't jubilee about the offseason, but they the NFL what they do best is sell optimism. They do that better than any other sports league. They sell optimism. Major League Baseball can sell optimism because a farm system and throwing your money around like that can turn your team around. You go from worst to first to Super Bowl, I mean to uh, World Series champions. But even with that possibility being wider, you know, being, you know, you know, being, it's more of a possibility than the NFL. Major League Baseball don't sell hope like the NFL do. NFL so optimistic. This is the season to be optimistic until you get to the first month of the season to see what issues was going on with your team. Injuries. So I'm not optimistic about the free agency. I'm optimistic about the rookies, but it's a lot of holes there to be filled. And, and Barnwell ain't lying. Now, did they have a third worst offseason, fourth worst offseason? I don't know. I, I'm not following the Dolphins. I'm not following the Patriots. I'm not following the Carolina Panthers or. I'm, I look an eye on, on Green Bay. I take an eye look on, on on Chicago, and I keep my eye on uh, Minnesota. And I and I think you know, just looking at the division, uh, you know, Chicago. Chicago is just they're the most talented team, top to bottom. They just don't have a quarterback. So if foes work out, he don't. I mean, Cam Newton's still out there, you know. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and them, you know. They didn't help Aaron Rodgers out with a secondary receiver, which was sad for, for Green Bay. Great for us. Um, I really ain't really been following what exactly they done. Minnesota, they lost Diggs and they replaced him with uh, the rookie from LSU. They lost, you know, Xavier Rhodes moved on and Everson Griffin. Who knows what's going to happen with him? Um, so nobody actually made a, a triumphant jump in this division. In this offseason, in my opinion, but it could become triumphant if some of these rookies come in or these offseason acquisitions come in and ball out. So we'll see from that aspect. But Barnwell said they should consider signing Jadavion Clowney, Marcel Darius, Jabal Shear. I definitely think Darius is a guy they need to think about signing. You know, if you sit down and talk to him and ask him, like, where's the motivation going? You had great talent coming out of Alabama. And Jadavion Clowney, I think about giving him a one year deal. His, his shit's slipping and slipping and slipping and slipping. You get him at a bargain deal, but like I said last week, the Lions ain't moving like a team that's, you know, thirsty or like they job is on the line. It's just not moved. Some of the offseason moves, these some of these motherfuckers out here is glorifying. You know, if Danny Shelton was, you know, if he was that dude, you know, do New England let him walk away for what, three million dollars, two point six five million dollars? No. You know what I'm saying? You know, some you telling me a, a championship team didn't have three million to give them, four million to give them, or a contender. I don't see him coming in making no no fucking impact. Just being honest, no impact like people indicating like he gonna be this nada that's gonna solve our run stopping game. I don't see it. If Danny Shell was any good, you know, England would have kept him. It wasn't like he got a big contract. I'm just saying, Harmon. I'm not. He didn't do nothing in New England, but was a special team player. You know, people swerving down Coleman was going to be good last year. He got torched. He was the worst corner in coverage at one point last year. And that's due to not having the front end that they need to have. If they if they put their money and their resources into the front end, 
offense and defensively, defensively Pacific here, Kuda probably be, you know, have a great year. Coleman have a better year. True Flying have an opportunity to have a better year. I think Armani going to end up starting anyway. He had an opportunity, but the D line is still sorry. The linebacker is still questionable. And if your front seven questionable, your back half going to suffer. Let alone your quarterback is depending on th four questionable characters in his offensive line. Two rookies is his should, excuse me. <coughs> Two rookies could win a starting job. That's going to be growing pains. Two rookie guards right now. Big V, which I told you guys, he ain't that fucking good. And, you know, Taylor Decker, who just suck and run and run and run and run blocking. But, hey, it is what it is. I didn't like the free agent half. I love the draft half. I disagree with him with the DeAndre Swift thing. We agree on Darius and, and the, J. Davion Clowney. But I agree with him on the free agent side of things. They didn't do enough. Um, you know, but they created this culture where people don't want to play in Detroit anyway. That was on uh, Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn for bringing them here. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. I put the article from 97 on a ticket uh, with ESPN's uh, Bill Barnwell saying, you know, they had the fourth worst offseason in the league. Not sure it was that bad, but hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to check out our Detroit Lions uh, talk talk playlist. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have business questions, quality sponsorship, video requests. Want to make a donation to the channel, cash app, PayPal, description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. Let me know what you guys think. One time for the one time we gone.